Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about a variation of the 3 3 point joseki, in which black cuts in the second line. So, this is going to be when black plays a knight's move here, white bumps against it, and plays a hane. So, in this case, black now has a choice of playing away or playing a hane here or extending here. So I talk, talked about the extension in, in a different video, and that's going to be a link up there, so you can see that, or in the comments below. In this video, I'm going to talk about the hane here. And when white covers here, black can cut at this point. So this is a very popular variation of this joseki, and it is a bit more complicated than most of the 3 3 point variations. So I'm going to go into the mechanics of it first, and then show you some full board positions. When black plays here, white has a choice of capturing here or cutting here. But first I should mention that when black goes into this variation, black is thinking of building thickness or strength towards that direction. So black is thinking of surrounding, maybe surrounding territory on this side or at least building some kind of a framework. So this is one of the things that makes this at first hard to understand, because when black played this move, you might have thought that black was trying to build in this direction. It's very natural to think that black is trying to build a territory or a framework in this area. But the point is that when black cuts here, that all changes and black is pointing, trying to point towards the left side. And usually that's how this joseki will turn out. So that means that with the first move, the marked move there on covering on the third line, it matters less which side black covers because black has this option to switch around and make a territory on the upper side. Or as I showed in the keep it simple video, black could have, let's go back a few moves and say that black, if black had chosen this variation, for instance, then it would have been much simpler for black to build territory in this direction. So black has that choice. Black does not have to necessarily make that choice at the time black played here, but in this fairly flexible variation, black actually has a choice right now. In this variation, I'm going to show you this one and black cuts on the second line. Usually white will cut on the second line too. So that's this move. White has to do something to protect these three stumps. So white's choices were to cut on the second line or just to capture the one stone. That were basically white just has the two choices. So first I'm going to go into this one and black gets to squeeze here. So the squeeze is quite satisfying, but you can see that already black is giving up some potential in this area. So white's going to be actually moving into the side while black takes a position on the upper side. Black captures the one stone. And now a lot depends on the ladder. When we're playing in a parallel opening, quite often white has a stone in the corner here, in the lower left corner. If white has a stone on the mark point, this is going to break the ladder. So in that case, for instance, when white plays here, black would like to have the option of capturing the ladder. And if black can capture with this ladder, usually this is going to be a local success for black. It's going to be good for black unless white has a very effective ladder breaking move. Otherwise, if the ladder does not favor black, the shape is to play here. Now when black plays here, obviously the white stone is not 100% dead yet. White does have some potential at A. But first I'd like to take a look at some of the other moves which for white are not so good. So for instance, playing here is a weak shape. It's not a strong shape. 
and black can just play this shape move. This gives black good shape. It takes away the danger of white playing a honey here. And white, black is leaning on the white group on the right. So black should have no trouble handling this. Like even if we just simplify it by saying maybe white plays here, maybe black plays something like this, that might be a slack move, but it looks good for black anyway. Otherwise black could play something on the right side. Something on the right side like this would be just fine for black. And white is going to be very busy because the group on, in the corner also, if black gets to come down at this point, white's going to have to worry about eyes eventually. So this is not going to be a problem for black. When black's group on the upper side, I'm talking about this group here, this group is already very close to being alive. So black has very little to worry about. So we'll go back a few moves. Another move that might be worrying would be this one, but actually this is not a problem for black. First of all, it does depend on the ladder. So at this point, black has two choices for a ladder. Black can play a ladder from here or a ladder from here. And if we say there's a white stone here, both of those ladders favor white. So it, maybe it's not a ladder. It does depend. Black does have two choices, so that increases the potential for a successful ladder. But if the ladder doesn't favor black, black can just play the squeeze here. White is gaining very little. White is capturing stones from what is was already pretty close to a live group. And black's thickness on the outside is improved. This wall is actually bigger than it started to be. With, with this point also being sort of a forcing move, black already has a very nice wall there. So this is not a not anything that bothers black. I'll talk about the other move with white playing a day in a real board position, a full board position from a real game. So here we are with white playing a direct 3-3 invasion. This is actually a very popular opening with black playing the high shimari here. This is another move that was originally played, well, it has been a long, uh, around a long while, but it became popular after AlphaGo played it. So, black, quite often in this case, black covers from this side. And again, one would usually assume, if, especially if you learned Go before AlphaGo, you would assume that black is going to build a wall like that and have it pointing in this direction, so black wants to build this area. But in this variation that we're studying in this video, it actually turns around, and black is going to surround the right side. So white crawls, and black plays a nice move. And with this honey here, white's best move is almost always to cover on the second line. So when this happens, black does have the option to do something to surround the lower, the, the right side, that is, this area. And one way that black could have done it would be to play the double honey. And I talked about this one, this move in a separate video. But in this case, black is going to cut here. This is by far the more popular move. And white captures one stone, black gets to squeeze. The squeeze is very satisfying, but again, you see at this point, the ladder does favor white. So black cannot play here to capture. White would just escape. And this is going to, this is going to come along this diagonal and hit this stone. I, I might've swerved a little bit to the left, but it's gonna hit that stone anyway. <clears throat> so black will not do that, but will play the knight's move. And this, makes it difficult for white to immediately move out because moves like this, moves like this, I showed you they don't work. I could go into one more variation and show this move. Again, this move is a very clumsy shape for white and black will have nice shape on that side. It looks bad for white. Again, because this black group on the right is already alive. It already has very close to a living shape. We'll have no problems with white attacking it. So this is not gonna be successful for white. White played away. This reduces the scale of Black's Moyo on the right. And we're going to go a bit further because 
we get another three three point. And in this position, white actually played away. And that was one of the potential moves there. This finishes white's position in the upper right. So it's important to remember that after playing the, so as to say, Joseki sequence that goes up to this move, playing here on the upper side is the follow-up move that white wants to play. So this is also an important move to remember if you're the side who's invaded the 3-3 three, three point. And black played away. Black played here. This is also a big move that is reducing white's potential on the upper side by opening up the potential of jumping in here. And it gives black a very nice territory in the upper left corner. So it's a big move that black can play when white has played away from that position in the upper left. And now we get to see white playing this move, which is going to start a fight there. Now, if black plays the strongest local move would be a play here. White will jump out. And black can connect with this move. This is actually going to be an even fight, or maybe even an advantage for black in the fight in the center of the board. But white will have ideas to use this fight just to scoop out all of black's potential territory on the right side. So that's the plan there. You can see that in some cases, White will play a move somewhere around here and be forcing black to play a stone here. If white can just fix up the connection there, that is not another thing that could happen for white. And it looks like white has reasonable potential to make a living shape on the right in this general area. White doesn't really have to hang on to all of the stones, but is going to focus on living on the right side of the board, which is the biggest black potential area. So maybe that's not so good for black. In the game, black actually sacrificed the three stones, which I think is a reasonable idea. Black played here, white pushed through, and black just connected here. So this sacrifices three stones, but there is some potential. White invaded the right side now, and so the fighting will shift to that area. It will shift to the area where white has just invaded here, so this area. Uh, but black does have that potential at A. So just to show you what the potential there is, black does have this attachment here. And if white simply connects, I mean, if simply plays underneath, then black can continue with this. If white continues to answer submissively, black will be able to save the three stones. So you can see there's some potential for black to do that. White will probably play something on this side and black will be able to reduce the upper side using this potential. So that's one example. Another way black could go about this, it's not as if black's going to do it, has to do it immediately, but black can be doing stuff like that or could be playing some other move, which will more indirectly be think, thinking, threatening to do something like this or something like this, or something like this, to make use of those three stones. So there's some potential there. Otherwise, black could start with with uh, a move, something like this. It's all, all of it, in each case, it's the same idea that black has to make use of these three stones. In some cases, sacrificing them and getting inroad to the upper side, to be able to reduce the upper side in return would be good enough. So now we're back to the upper right corner local diagram where black has just played this cut. And again, I would like to go into this variation. There is one more option for white at this point, which is to play a honey here. And this is by far the more sharp of the two variations. Before I was showing you white playing this knight's move, playing the honey here is much more aggressive and exciting, I'd say. In this case, uh, black will cut once, and I suggest this is the best move. Black actually has two choices with this move. Black could play this one, or black could play this one. This also saves the three stones. In this case, white would play an attachment here. Black would capture one stone. White would jump. You can see that having the potential forcing move here, 
White doesn't really want to play it yet, but that fixes White's shape on the right. I'm suggesting this is the main line. And if White escapes, this is going to be bad because Black can just crawl along. You can see that White's group in the corner does not have any way to make a lot. So this group is in danger of dying at this point. And White's groups on the outside, you can say there's two White groups because they're cut, they're cut off from each other. These two white groups both have trouble with a lack of liberties. So black's going to be able to escape out on the right side in this direction. And white will have no way to live in the corner, which means black's going to get a huge territory there. Usually this is good for black, especially when black has, has this cutting stone, which is, let's mark it with the pen. This cutting stone is causing some trouble. It's going to be a troublesome cut until white spends a, a couple of moves really to capture it. There's also the fact that black's group on the upper side here is, it's pretty much alive. So it's not in danger of being counterattacked. So I'm going to say this is good for black and white will probably just play here. Black takes. And for the time being, the local fight seems to favor black, like white can play maybe here, here, maybe something like this. But I think this favors black. So let's take a look at that in a full board position. In this game, white did cut here and black cut on the second line. So from the local diagram, we have the same corner, but the colors are reversed. It's the same Joseki. So white has chosen to build towards the upper side and made, black made an interesting decision here. Black could have played the knight's move, but again, we have to remember that in this case, the latter favors white. So white would just be able to capture the one black stone. So maybe that's why black played the honey here. There's also the fact that black has this these two stones in the upper left corner. So maybe black feels that he can, he has option of fighting strongly here. White cuts, black escapes obviously, and white captures. As I was saying, it's, a, it's probably not a good idea for black to run out here. So black is going to play the knight's move. And here black has made a position on the right side. This is now it's fairly safe. I'm talking about this group here. It's a safe position, but black stones in the center, the three stones here are not so strong. So they're, they're a bit weak, I'd say. And white's group on the upper side is alive more or less. And so the white group is the one in the center, this group here, which has captured one stone. So it's on the way to making one eye at least. And I'd say white will continue at A. So the normal move would be for white to continue at A. So let's put a stone there. And you can see that in the center, it looks like white has more potential to attack than black does. So if white continues while black is playing in the center, maybe white's going to get two points here, which again would put some pressure on black in the upper, upper right corner. It seems that white has locally more options. Of course, from Black's point of view, Black did take the upper right corner and has positions in two other corners. This position in the lower left corner, this territory is, is already a territory. So Black has something like 15 points here. And that position in the upper side, upper left corner. This is not really a territory, but it, I'm, I'm calling it just a position that Black has, a potential territory. At least it's going to be a strong group. So black does have these advantages. You can see that white does not have any solid territory yet. So I guess the game on the whole, while white has the local advantage, white does have to make something out of it. So maybe it's an even fight. So here we are back at the beginning position. I do have one other variation I want to show you. Uh, when black cuts here, white does have the option of playing here. 
Now this seems to be giving black an advantage, a local advantage here, when black gets the cover here and will play a connection probably on the third line. This is a way white wants to play when he wants to play simply and wants to take sente. So white wants to have a tempo to play away from this position elsewhere on the board. The mechanics of this variation is very simple. White has just taken the one stone. Sometimes you see computer programs wanting to take from the first line. I don't really advise that, but it probably ends up in the same position anyway. So let's look at this in a full board position. So I'll start this with this position. Um, Black has played two approach moves towards white on the left side and has played here. So this is a, a modern opening. It, it has been around for a while before we had computer programs, but also it's a modern, modern idea. Black is playing very quickly, a quick paced opening. White jumps into the three, three point. And in this case, black covered here. Again, this is a board position where black seems to have more potential in this direction. So you might have expected black to play cover from this side. However, playing here, we shall see black turn it around with the variation I've been talking about today. So black plays a hane and then cuts here. So white did have the option of cutting on the second line and getting into this variation. However, you might notice that black has played an approach move here. Just this one approach move, actually it has an effect on the ladder. So if you look at the ladder, when black plays here, yeah, I think I did that fairly well. It comes diagonally and it's gonna hit this stone here. So the ladder actually favors black. That might be the reason that white avoided this variation. So white just took the one stone. And black gets to play here and connect. So it looks like black has done a fairly good job of closing off the right side. Black has a nice potential territory here. It doesn't look very good for white to be trying to jump into that area where black has so much strength. But white did get sent it. White got the tempo. So now white's going to invade the upper side. And it seems that white has potential to sort of make black pay for playing this Kahari and then just leaving it. So white is starting to attack that stone. And black is limited to the right side. I don't see anything wrong with this for black. Black does have a, have a very nice position here. But since white got a tempo to invade the upper side, it's probably an even game. So today I've been talking about the cut at one and the main variations that derive from it. So I'm going to call this that we're looking at right now, the main variation. And another variation that I did mention is when white captures the one stone here and black gets this nice wall, but black does end up giving white a tempo. So I hope you liked the video today. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, please. Thank you.